spoiled James Weiss. Now we're gonna play a racing video game. I'm the Dodge Viper. No, you can't be the Dodge Viper too. Only I can be the Dodge Viper. Y you be the Corvette. Red, yellow, green. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm winning. First corner. Ah, I'm in the grass. You bumped me. I said no contact. Y you did this. No fair. First straightaway. Here I come again. I'm gonna pass you. I'm passing you. Dodge Vipers are the best. Chicane. No, uh, you hit the brakes and made me run into you. You're not racing fair. Uphill straight away. Viper, 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 and jump. Landed weird and spun out facing backward. You can't sleep over anymore. I'm going to grow up to be a real estate agent and fitness life coach influencer who cosplays as either Duke Nukem or Johnny Bravo while not realizing that those characters are self-aware hyper-masculine satire, just like my favorite car. Lurking in the background is the C6 Corvette. Someone's going to win this Viper Hunter C6 Corvette. Go.getentertowin.com slash regular cars. The giveaway ends July 19th. Buy a mug or a digital download, and someone is going to win this fantastic Corvette that corners better than a Viper. Thank you so much for taking part in these giveaways. It's your way to help regular car reviews continue to function and go out and have adventures and meet you. Click the link in the description, go.getentertowin.com slash regular cars. Mug digital download. The giveaway ends July 19th. The third generation Dodge Viper has an 8.3 liter V10, making 500 horsepower and 525 pound-feet of torque. The power comes from a simplified single throttle body instead of duals, which reinforces my opinion that ITBs on road cars, those things are just auditory autofiletio because it delivers intoxicatingly linear torque, with the exception of anything below 2,000 RPM. And just like the original Viper, the engine chugs and leaps like a farm tractor or a C10 truck with too much cam and not enough CFM on whatever shiny carb is sitting on top of whatever shiny built 350 that the owner paid over a thousand dollars for to sit and look nice inside his truck. And this is unlike a Corvette's LS, which at low, and I mean sub 1000 RPM, behaves like an IDI diesel. Pick any gear. I don't know. It's all good. But a Viper, despite having a larger engine, needs to be at higher RPM. But once that 8.3 liter freight train starts breathing at around 3,000 RPM, the car gets more out of control than a backyard full of hard seltzer fueled rugby players rediscovering how cool water balloon launchers are. Dodge the father, ram the mother. <laughs> I'm talking about those water balloon launchers that take two people to hold the elastic tubing handles and a third person to load and release the balloon. How are those things legal? They send a balloon over two houses. How is a Viper legal? It's a car engine 
that makes the same power that comes out of the output shaft of an original Patton Whitney PT6A11 gas turbine aircraft engine. And just like any aircraft engine, this beast gets hot. And there's not much shielding between the engine and the T56 six-speed transmission and you. So you get hot too. Oh, and the side dumps heat up the seats and footwell too. So you're getting cooked from both sides of your body, no matter where you sit in the car. Seriously, this is a convertible and you still have to run the air conditioning with the top down. It's that hot. Now this new interior is blocking up some of that heat. A, a previous owner went for a quasi VIP upholstery. I, I, I like it. It's the, the thick diamond stitch seats made this as comfortable as a Viper could be, but ugh, I still have to take off my shoes to drive it because my feet are too wide and this tiny pedal box is too small. A Toyota Serra has a wider pedal box than a Viper. I see you minivan window switches. You may have 500 horsepower, but you're still a doge. Now, why is the owner driving with his helmet on? Well, because he didn't want to be on camera, but don't worry, even if he had his helmet off, other people on the road would still rev at him and try to race him. People just see a Viper and their intelligence drops to ungabunga levels. Ugh. Here's a fast car. I see go fast. I see big ball car. My hunga bunga vroom vroom. He's a, I'm a big car too. My vroom vroom big car too. I'm a vroom vroom along with the Viper vroom vroom and then you're gonna both vroom vroom. I'm just as vroom vroom as baby maker vroom vroom. My Dodge Dakota vroom vroom as big as Viper. Yellow light, other side yellow light, other side red light. That means my green light come here. Both of us move fast. Well, you see me, baby, I'm as big as a Viper and I'm forklift certified. Finish line at Hoagie Fest, Mega Millions. So you want to own a Viper? Well, get ready for that every single day. Everywhere you go in a Viper, people are gonna wanna race you. Own a Corvette, no one gives a shit. Vipers are stupid. Every time I see them, I get excited too. And then I drive them, and it's just, ah! Ever date a girl, and then go meet her dad, and then realize you look like her dad? Ugh. Viper. 2004 Dodge Viper SRT10. The official car of long highway pulls and unpaid moving violation. <laughs> Waffle House Tony Montana is on the scene. He's doing rails and filling jails. He's running on two hours of sleep spread across eight different power naps lasting 15 minutes each. The only thing he's had to eat today is a handle of Maker's Mark and a plate of cold pizza cheese. Because he's, mmm, yeah, built Tonka tough. Dirt Devil, my smegma. The 2004 Dodge Viper SRT10 is a sports car with no traction and no stability. Just ABS and the fallible human mind. All you need is to learn guitar enough to get laid and enough Bukowski to seem deep. But if you don't, it doesn't matter. People have no use to you anymore. Because you were put on this earth for one reason, to go faster than the condoms at the Olympic Village. The Dodge Viper hates taking it slow more than a high school quarterback on prom night. Car and driver drove a third-gen Viper SRT10 and found it faster than the comparable Corvette Z06 in track testing. And yeah, that tracks. Because the Dodge Viper SRT10 is a big bag of lab rats injected with Adderall and 4 Loco. Although I was... I, I maintain that even with these big tires, the Corvette will be faster in the corners. When it comes down to numbers, and if the track has enough straight lines in it, the Viper can outclass a C6 because it's faster than a grease fire. It'll leave you feeling the way Guy Fieri thinks he looks. The entirety of its value comes from its ability to make you the guy with the fast car. It's not the same as getting to pick your own nickname, 
but it's close. It's got big 340 rears and 270 front tires. It's got a side pipe exhaust that looks like the gaping mouth of an old man forced to perceive primary colors in the month of June. Even when the top is down, this gives you less rear visibility than you'd get looking back on a high school relationship in hindsight. And with the top up, you can enjoy a gigantic blind spot to the rear on your right. This is built to shorten your lifespan because it encourages aggressive driving in the way a Honda S2000 or a Corvette doesn't. It plays into the idea of cars being one big show. In a Dodge Viper, you are always putting on a performance because you're always on in a Dodge Viper. And that's how people will perceive you. Every teenager will say, do a burnout, and then be upset that you don't instantly gratify them in the way Jimmy Johns does. You'll go inside rudders for a vape cartridge and a can of Truly, and you'll come back out three minutes later to find a bunch of undergrads taking selfies in front of your car, making up their own gang signs. And when you leave, they're going to resent you for breaking up their party or they're going to tell you to get bent when you say they can't drive it, or that you won't do a burnout for them. Owning a Dodge Viper means getting to drive it for a few months out of the year and hating the kind of people you meet when you do. This is an early third gen, so it has the T56 transmission, and then Dodge later switched it to the TR660-60 in 2008. On the subject of 2008, that's about how long it took for Dodge to switch to an electronic throttle. This still has a cable throttle. Pull on it. You're on your own. Keeping the spirit of the 90s alive better than most, honestly. You just have to get past these pesky issues like the cabin being hotter than Satan's fupa. Sweat any harder and you could boil a soft-boiled egg. This is hotter than a strip club on dollar dance night because the crossover pipe is behind the driver's seat under the car. And then it's coming out the side of the car. It's got a melted heat shield because it does a better job producing heat than it does evacuating it. So you can enjoy burning like the bush that spoke to Moses. You'll be sweating like a pedestrian at a Mustang meet. You'll be drenched like a bicycle seat after the Tour de France. You'll be soaked like a man in a gimp suit at high noon outside the Ponderosa Steakhouse in South Bend, Indiana. Okay, I'm done. One more. You'll be sweating harder than a fursuiter trying to dance their way into their favorite artist's pants. But heat isn't the only issue. For the most part, the look is right. And the performance is right, but the interior and build quality are everything you would expect from a 2000s era Dodge. Which means it's everything you expect from Dodge. Now and forever. You have to hit that Honda Broline to be comfortable, if you can even call it comfort. It holds 11 quarts of oil. But what a Dodge Viper gives in lubrication, it takes away in fuel economy. As this gets an EPA rated 12 miles per gallon city and 20 miles per gallon highway. Compare that to a C6 Corvette's astonishing 32 to 34 miles per gallon highway. But honestly, after the usual wear and tear and driving this car the way Dodge intended, you'll be lucky to touch 18 highway. But do the negatives matter? Does the performance outweigh it all? In very slight moments, yes. In a very childhood pushing a car around the carpet, making what you think an engine sounds like, that is recreated here. There is a childhood innocence to a Dodge Viper. Yes, a Turbo LS will pull on this like a hotshot trucker on speed. But in very brief moments, when there's no one else on the road, no one is watching you, and you can unleash this V10 not for any bystanders, but for you, then yes, a Viper is worth it. You won't care about the narrow footwell. You won't care about the heat. You won't care about the fuel economy. You'll just care about the sensation of G's pushing you back and that sound pulling you forward. A Dodge Viper offers people an experience that cannot be replicated through any other engine and certainly not electric. Yes, electric cars are faster, but they can't make you feel like this. Grab each gear and the sensation starts anew. It's like how Dave Grohl said the best part of any Aerosmith song is the chorus. 
No one knows the lyrics to any Aerosmith song. They only know the chorus. No one really cares about the specs of a Dodge Viper. They just care about that moment of acceleration and sound. Phil Collins in the air tonight is a kind of a mid-level 80s song, but that one drum solo, like in the last two-thirds of the song, yes, fantastic. It's every song by the darkness when they hit the high falsettos. It's like when a Ben Folds song goes from touching to angry and profane in the middle. It's like any ska song where the singer takes a break and reminds us to pick it up. Yes, here's the moment I was waiting for. In a way, this is the automotive equivalent of someone who gets a million chances just because they apologize and owned up to their mistakes. They, they get endless leeway despite never actually changing. Because someone who's grown as a person will never be given as much credit as someone who continually screws up but shows a willingness to grow. A person who screws up again and again without growth will see a heaven as long as he says sorry and gives the puss and boots eyes. They will be held on the same pedestal as someone who actually acknowledges their faults and shows a dedication to improving, because performative change is more in your face than real change. Real growth is subtle, and the Dodge Viper subtly grew over the years, even though it never changed underneath. It was the same theme. You don't often realize it happening in front of you until it's time to put some distance between before and after and you can appreciate the growth. There's no immediacy to change. It's like weight loss or muscle growth. Real change doesn't immediately call attention to itself. So people can go through unacknowledged bouts of growth throughout their entire lives and still not get the kind of recognition that say, a serial cheater will get for keeping it tucked in, or a car company will get for offering better sports car options. Is the Dodge Viper deserving of a chance? In some instances, yes. In, in the rest of the world, it's a resounding maybe. But I can pour yards of criticism onto a Dodge Viper, and it's not going to change your mind if it's already made up. ACDC is a basic band that played the same song for 40 years, but if you like them, you love them. Brian from ACDC once said something to the extent of, we won't stop rocking until the rocking reaches completion. And I love that. And in the end, I love seeing a Dodge Viper being driven hard on the road. That's an 05. This is an 04. Pretty much the same year. The differences inside are so skewed toward the Viper in terms of sales because in the middle of the 2000s we were getting wireless start this does not have that this has a traditional key it even has the same fob that you drop on the floor <laughs> that comes with the dodge neon same thing same everything you don't have traction control you don't have stability control you have abs because it's mandated but nothing else the switches in here are the same as every other Chrysler product. I can't drive this with my shoes on. I have to take my shoes off because the pedal box is too small for my feet. So when I'm driving this later, it's just my feet. However, the Viper does have a manual throttle cable. So I can have the spirit of the 90s knowing that now literally my big toe on the Snickers bar sized accelerator skinny pedal I'm feeling the whole engine through my toe but if we hop back over right back here to the Corvette my shoes on the Corvette is thoroughly modern I have a engine start button I have selective ride sport and tour which honestly this, when you turn it to, when you have it on tour, it's, it just feels like a car. If you turn it to sport, it feels like a car with worn bushings. I have electric doors, buttons on it. However, those on the Viper are also electric doors. But I have a wide pedal box. I have seats that have really, where's my rocker? There it is. That has the biggest 
lumbar support of any car I felt. And it makes sense because the Viper over there is made for maniacs. This thing over here is made for old men with back problems. I'm still talking and yep, we finally reached the end of the lumbar support. It's for old men who just have the big bellies and just do you drive like this and have everything just to support me and let's go to Red Robin. This is, I look at the C6 as a car you will never inherit. You know, I'm probably buried in that car. I can't let the kid touch it. Whereas the Viper is, was bought by people who already are kids. This thing is the top tier of every single video game you've played. Corvettes always are in the middle. The Vipers are the top. And they look fit. <laughs> You fall into it. Look how much space there is here. The owner told me, even though it's a warm day today, wear long pants and I can feel the heat. We haven't been driving this thing for maybe an hour and it's still hot. I have to sit sideways. Look at this. Look, I'm going to take... Look at where my leg is. The steering wheel is off to the side. It's hitting me right here. So in order to drive this, I have to sit sideways. Nothing has changed ergonomically from the from the first generation. This is the Gen 3. But oh 500 horsepower. That number, 500 horsepower, kept messing with General Motors. Bruh! Bruh! Giveaway still going on. C6 Corvette. Click on the link in the description, go.getentertowin.com slash regular cars. Someone is going to win this C6 Corvette, and it brought me so much pleasure to command it, and I want you to command it too. Click on the link in the description. Go.getentertowin.com slash regular cars buy a mug digital download. Someone's going to win this. Thank you so much for supporting regular car reviews. You're the reason taking part in these giveaways is the way we can have adventures. And I want to have so many adventures and see so many people at car shows and conventions. I'll see you out there. Thanks for supporting regular car reviews.